We're all camping. We're all making do. Yes. And we welcome the very popular analyst of this program, Mike Abumeshwick, from his palatial South Regina estate. Bring him in, boys. Hey, there he is. I've been in that office. How you doing, Abu? Oh, fantastic. It's a big holiday. Uh, you're going the wrong way. We'd like to see your face. Can you move yes. it down? Yeah, I guess stand up if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, I apologize to those listening at rodpeterson.com slash listen live. You're not catching this comedy as it rolls here on a Monday morning. It's very Ricky Bobby. Yes. Yeah, he's sliding off his chair. Okay, Abu, get serious. You couldn't, on <laughs> you honestly couldn't get dive into the pool for this interview? I'm disappointed. Man, this summer is going to be great. I'm not going to leave my house. I'm going to have the pool going. It's going to be fantastic. Right to the right of Abu is is his beautiful pool. He's got a he's got a, a yard very there. He's going to show us very similar to. Jackson. I was going to say, look, there it is. Wherever Abu is, I want to be because that sun is like ten thousand degrees on the side of his face. He's got a gigantic yard. Like I can't even imagine what the square footage of that lot is with a huge pool, and he's actually showing it to us on video. Thank you, Abu. I appreciate that. See what we got for people on a Monday morning. Just good old-fashioned, wholesome entertainment. Thanks, Abu. There's some, uh... <laughs> What's going on, guys? How's it over there in the bunker? You're, you're upside down. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are we on yet? Yep, we've been on for a good five minutes. I appreciate your humor and all the rest. Abu, let's start with the news of the day. I got a lot of questions for you, and our viewers will, too. The news this morning, the CFL has postponed training camps indefinitely. What was your first thought when you heard that? Um, I, I think that's the responsible thing to do is postpone things indefinitely. Um, see, out here in Saskatchewan, outside in the Prairies, I think we're in a very, very different situation than some of the bigger centers. Um, I, I, I could see, you know, the Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal markets not uh, playing sports until, you know, until, until the summer's over. But um, out here on the prairies where it's a little easier to social distance ourselves, I, I think it's going to be a very different situation. So while we're out here on the prairies waiting and be, you know, I might feel like, oh, come on, let's just get after it. Uh, they've got some real big problems and big concerns in the bigger centers that are far beyond sports. I'm actually glad that you brought that up because I was thinking about that this morning. I mean, where I grew up, you could see for miles before you saw the next closest miles. How much are you keeping in touch with your family and friends in Toronto, the most populous city in this country, with how they're making out with things? And what's life like for them? You know, I, you know all you really can do is laugh and, and joke about this, you know, but, but, it, but it's very much as serious. Uh, I, I, was, uh, I was kidding around with my, uh, with my buddy in Toronto the other day saying, hey, you got a week. If you want to come and stay out here, I'll give you a week. After that, I think we're going to shut down our borders and uh, keep all you infected people out. Um, I, like I said, I think that that is the real that that is a that is a, a real concern. I mean, uh, social distancing it, it can't be a thing when you live. I, I grew up on the twenty fourth floor of an apartment building that had probably two hundred thousand people, you know, packed in onto twenty four floors, and you're all breathing the same air, you're all touching the same elevator buttons. Um, it, it's it's inevitable. Um, so not to bring a doomsday uh, theory to it, but uh, um, the sports that I'm most concerned with are, um, I got a big match this afternoon with my son on the front lawn. Uh, I, I beat him, uh, yesterday five to one in a mini soccer match that, uh, he's really, uh, going to come after me today. I know it. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm guarantee that you're appreciating the family time. So for those that can find a positive in it, uh, that's what we're all trying to do. Um, one other thing, just what do you think about? the NBA's talk of bubble cities that they, I don't know if you've seen this or not, but this is what I heard this morning on ESPN, the NBA having four or five, six arenas, keeping the teams quarantined and getting back to playing reason being television revenue stimulate. Right. He's right there. The money, the money, but you're a money guy. Follow me on this. This is my question. I, I, I'm not, I'm not a money guy. I'm a, economics is a social science. It's how does people behave with money? So if you follow the money, you're going to know how people are going to behave. 
flip it on TSN, flip it on Sportsnet. I mean, they're playing games. I mean, there's only so many times they can play the Raptors winning, beating Philly and the bounce game. There's only so many times, you know, you can watch the greatest game ever, the 2007 uh, Grey Cup. Um, they got to come up with something. Um, soccer was doing it, or the Italian league was doing it before, you know, the stuff really hit the fans and having uh, empty stadium games. Uh, I'm watching them all now. Um, you know, the WWE is doing it with WrestleMania and in empty venues. So, I mean, the, the, when I grew up, uh, and the CFL is very much a, a ticket driven, uh, as far as a revenue point of, point of view, they need the, uh, the, the gate. Um, other leagues in North America aren't, aren't such. They have billion dollar TV revenues and nobody's paying for an ad on, on TSN right now because nobody's watching TSN. So they got to get some sort of content out there and how to do it. I mean, you know, have, have a, yeah, lock guys into, uh, uh, do, do what we're doing, you know, um, ha having that one-on-one -on, -one on the front yard, except it's not me and my son. It's, it's, you know, it's Ovechkin against Crosby, you know, self-isolate these people with cameras around them. There's an idea for a TV show. There you go. <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny you said that, Abu. There has been talk of Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson secretly working to plan a one-on-one -on -one golf match, you know, during all of this without any fans. So it's the same idea you're talking about. Well, but my point on watching. Well, right, they are. They are. But my point on this is this: corporate America is what makes pro sports go. And being however you want to talk about what you do, you're a financial guy. Um, without bringing too many people down, what's happened to corporate America? We're all talking about sports, but corporate America drives the sports. Has it not just been completely obliterated? Um, well, nobody, n nobody foresaw, uh, uh, other than a few people that could get really uh, in a lot of trouble. No one foresaw the, uh, the global economy coming to a halt. Nobody saw that. So if we're all in the same boat, we're all in the same boat. Um, where corporations come out, I mean, I'm going to do the silver lining here. A lot of the corporations bought back a lot of their stock at really, really cheap prices. And, 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 and now, as the market bounces back, they have the opportunity to put it back out there and, and make more money. Um, there's obviously more that goes to that. But uh, um, giving away, not giving away, how do, how do I want to say this to be politically? Yeah, th th this does not make sense in the frame of capitalism. This, it's to make money and then do what you want of it, not... You know, give everyone a tax break, make everyone get all this kind of stuff. So I guess what I'm saying is that corporate America, they'll be there uh, and they've been forced to restructure and get rid of a lot of the uh, redundancies and, and things that they're doing inefficiently when, when markets are going well, that you kind of get lazy. This is still, did they buckle in their shoe straps? Is that the phrase yeah. I'm looking for? Um, and seeing what's worth it and what's not. Like I just said, do we really need gate revenue? Does the NHL really care if they make, you know, what do they make, $400,000, $500,000 or less than that? I don't know, three hundred grand for, for great worries when they're making a billion dollars by us watching the game on TV and they, now they can sell the ads and stuff on that. So, yeah, follow the money, and that's uh, what Darren was saying. I think that's where most of the leagues will be going to because I do not see the bigger centers functioning at all forget about sports you know um yeah so maybe we bring the bombers the 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 the, the riders obviously the stance and the eskimos and we lock them all in into mosaic stadium and uh they have a tournament you know maybe something like that happens i don't see that happening in the cfl but they got the bucks south of the border to make that happen but it wouldn't be in a big center i don't see it It'd be in a smaller center where there's just not a lot of people to touch elevator buttons and stuff well it's a fun it's a fun discussion and that's why i wanted to bring this up to you as a 10-year pro athlete you have some thoughts on this that i'm interested to get i mean lebron has come out and said i'm against this i'm against the bubble cities i'm against playing in empty stadiums he's worried about the safety he doesn't think it would be any fun my question and the earlier on topics that I'll just put to you now is, does he have a responsibility to just go along with whatever he's told by the NBA? No, 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 no. Okay, no, no. All of a sudden he's saying no. No, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Again, this is, the, you know, martial law allows people to put their own rules in place. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not cool with that at all. So Mr. NBA, whatever, I got a contract. LeBron has a contract to play NBA that's five on five, that's in 
uh, I was going to say Cleveland, but wherever the hell he wants to play this year, that's his contract. And you're obliged to this contract. Not to play in some random bubble city or nothing like this. Now you're telling me what to do, and I don't believe in that sort of communism. Uh, call it socialism, whatever you want to call it. Uh, you have a contract, that's what you're obliged for. Where now, what I see is, is guys coming together and saying, all right, anyone that wants to play basketball, here, here's what we're going to do. We're going to uh, ship you guys here and then do a draft and have a true, true all-star type performance. Because you're not going to get every single guy wanting to play. You know, there's some guys that have the disease. Some guys' parents have the disease or, or virus, whatever it's going to be called. I, I, I don't see it being, uh, uh, you know, the Cleveland Cavaliers against the uh, L.A. Lakers. I, I see it as some sort of hodgepodge of, uh, I don't know. Let's throw that out there. What would be cool? Where are you from? The Northeast, the Southeast, global. That, that'd be fun. And then break that in, in, into areas of the, areas of the, of the country. So you have different tournaments and different leagues. And at the end of the year, maybe they all come together at some tournament or something. You know, this could be really fun. <laughs> well, they're just trying to find a way, back to my original question, to get on the air. Period. Right. Call and get the team. They need to make money. Right. <laughs> That's what they're trying to do any possible way. And you know the CFL sitting there figuring the same thing out. Safety of fans and players and staff, paramount, yes, but also they're a business. And there's nothing wrong with making money. What are you doing? Did your shoelaces come on? Oh, it's your dog? Yeah, he just, he's, he's, he's deaf. His Hi, Disco. Tigger. He's deaf. No, he can't this, hear me. Disco's dead. This is Tigger. <laughs> this is Tigger. <laughs> okay. He's not All right. what, what are you doing that's, at that house? That's, that's Disco over there. Ah, uh, right. The Joe Exotic of dogs. Look at that. He's got a fish tank. You're Joe Exotic. <laughs> Do you have Netflix? What? <laughs> what is this thing? Okay. Speak up. I can't hear. Last question oh, for you. Man. Just an old last, man doing something. Last question for you. I'm sorry. Uh, here's one I saw. In NBC Sports put this out on Twitter, and I just want to ans ask it to you randomly. What's the one stadium... You went into and you were most in awe of. And everybody think about it because I want everybody's answer, including our viewers as well. But off the top of your head, what's the one stadium that you were, or arena or whatever, that you were in awe of? There was, there, there, there was two of them. Uh, um, uh, Iverwind Stadium, because uh, Angela Mosca, I loved wrestling growing up. And seeing his name up there made me feel like, you know, Hulk Hogan or something like that. As well as they have a lot of uh, unique characters in the fans there. Uh, they are the ones that said, hey, Abu, if you're here, who's watching the Quickie Mart? Probably the best uh, taunt of all time. Uh, it the was other pretty one good. was Calgary. Uh, uh, Calgary. You walk and, and the reason why there is because, you know, Doug Flutie's name's up there. And uh, Dave Sapungis, who is a, a Western guy who, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I, I read everything of every team that I played for. And so I, I, I've, I've uh, been around, I've never met him, but I've been around his name as holding a lot of Western records. Um, I love that pregame, looking up and seeing all those names. You know, uh, uh, Ana Stuckus was the name that kind of stuck, stuck out as, uh, in BC. Uh, Ana Stuckus, but continue. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's it just, just, just stuff that made the made me feel part of something much 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 bigger and greater than i was and um you know you miss that when you're not paying sports as much i mean as much as you're part of a family but uh you know that extended part that 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 you matter um that's what i loved about sports and that's why i like going to those different uh, venues because they weren't just you know bricks and and mortar and and, and astroturf they were uh, uh where legends were made well, Abu, you're one of them. I miss having you in here for sure, but I appreciate you making time for us. Say hey to the kids for me and Tigger, and we'll chat soon. Thank you. I need a Winnipeg Blue Bomber helmet, Brad. Hook your brother up. <laughs> yes, you do. What about Lumpy? Missing. Oh, Brad Foddy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. Can we get Abu a bomber helmet? Can we make that happen? Thanks, Mike. Love you. Stay safe, everyone. Appreciate it. That was, uh, look at this guy, flexing. He did that without his shirt on in Amelie Arena in Tampa Bay one night. Just stood up and did that, what you just saw. Wow. You're watching Rod Peterson On Demand. 
For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.